All right, and here's a quick video review for uh, Transformers Thrilling 30 Generations Rhinox. Apparently, he is one of the Thrilling 30. He is, where's the Series 2? Oh, he, he apparently is number 5, I guess, of the Thrilling 30. Um, it's the only number I see that might indicate where he falls as part of the Thrilling 30. Um, so, yeah, he comes in the standard, or what has become the standard Generations packaging. Uh, he does have the Maximal symbol up here, which is nice. Um, and he comes with the twin spinning Gatling guns. It's basic packaging. Some really nice artwork on here of, of Rhinox on the packaging. And his bio on the back. The bio does show him with silver cannons. Uh, they are brown. Uh, the, the Takara version looks really nice. Those, those guns are all painted up with like some green and some silver. And maybe worth picking up just for that. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, there, there's the packaging. There's uh, just a quick little overview of, of how he comes, what he's going to look like on the shelf when you get him. Let's go ahead and open him up here. And here is Rhinox in his uh, Rhino mode. I don't know why I had trouble coming up with that. Um, and it's a pretty decent Rhino mode. It's, it's Voyager-ish sized. I'm like, here's a quick comparison of him with uh, Transmetal Primal. Just to get an idea of his beast mode size. Um, so yeah, there he is. Um, not a whole lot of articulation in beast mode. Um, it's mostly there. I mean, you can't open his jaw if you want. It looks a little distended, but you can open his jaw. Um, his horns, his horn, his ears, um, that's actually hard plastic, and his, uh, his butt flap here are all really soft, rubbery plastic. Um, and honestly, like, I have to say, like, it's not as noticeable. One, it kind of helps folding everything in back here, and I understand why they did the ears and the horn, just so they didn't break uh, under stress. But I have to say, they did a really, really good job of matching the uh, the paint or plastic color on the figure to the, uh, the color of the soft plastic. It's not an exact match, um, and it may be even more distinctive on the, on the camera, but uh, to the naked eye, it, it's, it's a very, very close match to... Uh, to the plastic, which is which is kind of nice. It doesn't stand out uh, significantly uh, just under normal lighting. So yeah, that like I said, there's not really posability here in Rhino mode uh, unless you want to open his jaw a little bit. Um, he's pretty much just a big solid hunk of I'm going to knock you down and take all your things, even though Rhinox would never do that. Um, so yeah, so transform him. You open him up here. You start here. You open up these side flaps. I'm going to unhook him from here and open the side up. And then in his tummy, right where it belongs, is his beautiful, gorgeous, you pull this out, the chain guns of doom. And they're stuck together. They're transformed and stuck together like this. Uh, basically, it's just these two, uh, the two uh, saw blades, I guess, plugged together like that. And then the handle gets pushed up and it forms the stomach of the... Uh, of the rhino. You can see now he's kind of hollowed out. He's got his guts. So you open that up and then you bring the uh, handles around to the back and that gives you his spinning chains gu guns of doom. And they spin really well. Uh, you, you can keep them going, you can just keep spinning them all day, but they, they, I mean like they, they spin very freely um, and, even, and even just one push will give you a good up, a good spin on the Gatling gun. So yeah, one, one spins a little bit longer than the other for some reason, uh, every single time, but you can, you can get a nice uh, spin going on the chain guns. They're fun, as you can see by me constantly, constantly playing with them. Anyway, we'll put those off to the side and onto the figure itself. Once you've got those up, you want to come up here, you want to pull the butt flap piece up on its armature out of the way, uh, and then you'll untab these uh, side panels here and bring this whole hip assembly down here. And then these come up on this armature and fold down. It helps, one of, one, on mine, one of the, uh, oh, before you do that, you want to flip the foot out here as well. Um, there, on the rhino ankle. Come on, why do you, why do you want to flip out? There we go. Um, I find it helps if you, when you bring them down to do this first, so this notch goes, moves past, there's a little notch here on the thing, make sure that comes all the way down. Because on mine, one of mine, and if you don't do it that way, just pushing it down on the front of it 
it doesn't want to come all the way down and it'll interfere with the knee. So you want to make sure to bring that, make sure this come, the green part sits all the way flush against the leg and then fold the gray part up. Uh, it's, you, you can do it like that and do the whole thing all at once. I've just found to double check to make sure that's sitting all the way flat. It helps if you bring the, the green part all the way down and then fold the tan part back up. And then you can see you've pretty much got his legs ready to go. But take that, you, know, you want to rotate it here at what will be the waist joint, just like that. Um, this green piece in here swivels as well, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And then you just bring this part up onto the back. So here are the ab pieces off to the side, but you want to leave those off to the side for the moment. Bring the legs out, uh, you just kind of grab them right here at the shoulder and pull them out a little bit, and that will free up the inner workings here. And then, uh, the arms up. Grab the lower jaw, this whole assembly here comes down and like that and snaps into the body like that. And then you fold down this piece right here and fold down the mouth to form his chest. And then the arms, actually before you put the arms down, now these hinge, you can see the, hint, the little metal pin here on each side that these hinge on for uh, animal mode. Uh, for robot mode, you bring them back, and then there's a hinge here that you want to fold forward. You don't want to fold them forward at the further, further innermost hinge. You want to fold them in here about halfway or up, up on this post. And that brings them right up, once you snap them into place, uh, brings them right up against the, uh, the edge of the body. So it should look like that. And once you've got that accomplished, these pieces pivot, so you just push on the bottom of those to rotate that in to fill in the chest, just like that. All right, we'll go with this. And then once that's done, you just bring the arms down on their armatures down over the uh, over the torso. Uh, the, the rhino legs pull out a little bit. They don't click. I, I would have liked them to click down. They, they do end up being a little loose here on this. It's not usually a problem if you have them standing there. They don't go up by themselves, but they're not. They could be a little bit more stable, which is a little disappointing. But, um, but you do just pull them down and have his arms up. You rotate them around like that. And then you open this piece up, and then flip, actually you want to rotate them this way. Oh, no, I had it right the first time. And then flip the hand out, and then close that piece all the way up into the, back up into the brown spot. And then he got his hands out. Same here. Yeah, come here. Just got to get your thumb in there to get his thumb out. There's his body, and then this whole rhino head piece folds down onto his back, all the way down like that. Now when I first got him, I stood him up, and he was a little hard to stand. He kept wanting to fall back, fall back, fall back. Um, and plus, when you looked at him from the side, he looked very, you can see he looks very skinny and hollow. There's a big hollow gap there in the middle. Um, and with his arm out there, it looks, uh, looks kind of messed up, like he's got some rhino bits hanging off the back of a very skinny robot. And the reason for that is you have to take this waist piece and fold it back a little bit. It sits back in there, it comes up and kind of fills in this gap here so he doesn't look as uh, skinny and hollow and brings the hips back so they sit, instead of sitting forward up here, they sit under the shoulders in line with the rest of the body, which is what you want. And then he stands just fine. If we can get him to stand here. There we go. So yeah, then he stands just fine, and he looks he's, he looks more squat in proportion. That's part of the reason I think he's been looking a little lanky in some photos, is they didn't bring that, uh, that hip piece all the way up to where it should be. Um, and that makes him look a little bit more squat and powerful, look a little bit more like Rhinox, as well as, like I said, it carries the weight where it should be um, down along the hips, like a straight line down the spine, versus having all this back part and the waist sitting up here uh, in the front part of his body. Uh, the hip joints could be a little tighter on mine, but I, I think that's more by design. Um, a nice head sculpt. He doesn't ha quite have his giant lips, but they are there if you look at the head sculpt up close. And he does have his big mouth. Um, not as defined lips, but uh, he does got his big wide mouth. And you can kind of see there's a sculpt there for his, at least his lower lip. So yeah, very cool. And we'll focus him again. All right, and then you can hold his guns, of course. You just pop them into his hand. And this is where, again, this is where I wish they would have at least made these blades silver because they just look like a big chunk of, like, rhino chunk. 
Uh, they, they blend in very very much with his body. He does have a couple Maximal symbols up here on his head, and there's some neat little designs and etchings inside or around the edges of the of these guns here. It's really nice. So yeah, and there's Rhinox all armed up and transformed and ready to go. Now, size comparison time. Now, here he is with uh, Transmetal Optimus. You can see he, he ends up being a little shorter. Which, again, I, 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 um, he was a little shorter than, Prim than Primal on the show, I believe. Um, and then just with some other Transmetal Maximals here. Here he is with Cheetor. Um, he's really nicely in scale with the Season 2 cast. I don't have my Henke Dinobot, um, but he looks really good with them, too. Now, let me get Rat Trap up here. Rat Trap's a little harder to stay in because that's just Rat Trap. But uh, we'll throw a Rat Trap in there. So yeah, nice little uh, group shot there of all of them together. And he fits in really nicely with, with, uh, with the Transmetal 2 Season 2 cast. Uh, or not Transmetal 2, the Season 2 Transmetal cast. Um, here he is with uh, the original Ultra Class Primal. And again, looks good with him. I think a little shorter than Rhinox technically was in relation to Primal, but it still looks good on your shelf. And again, if you want him to be a little taller, you can move that waist piece down. You're going to have a little bit more trouble making him stand uh, just balance-wise. And he will look a little skinnier, but you can give him a little, an extra little bit of height um, if you wish. And then just real quick, here he is with his uh, fellow updated Beast Wars figure that we just saw. Now here he is with Waspinator. Just to give me an idea of the size difference between the two of them. So yeah, once I figured out that hip that hip issue, um, really went up in, in, in my eyes. There's a few things that I wish were a little better, like when you fold the hands up into the arms for Rhino mode, you don't notice it because it's in Rhino mode, but it keeps the uh, these green flaps from closing all the way like they do here in arm mode. They stick out just a little bit. Um, it's, it's a minor thing. Um, I, w I wish the guns were painted. I think the guns look a little dull, although they are very much they are they are a lot of fun to play with. I wish they did give him more of uh, the distinctive lips that he had on the show, but um, it's such a great figure overall. Otherwise, that I'm willing to overlook that. It's it's a minor nitpick, but it is a nitpick. Um, and again, like I said, once you fill in once you fill in that waist by moving that piece back, he's uh, he's quite solid. Um, now, now, one of the things they did do <laughs> um, in they have no function with the feet flipped up in rhino mode, but they did give him ankle tilts. Um, you can see here, there's a little joint right here. So uh, you can actually tilt his ankles a little bit, give him some more of those wide-legged stands, which again, fits Rhinox. He was always kind of the charge in and, and do some crazy stuff, and you can get him in these flat-footed stances doing his I'm just shooting you with both my guns type of poses. So it's kind of nice. I do kind of feel like, I was mentioning on Twitter, I do kind of feel like they're just messing with us now because there was a long-standing joke uh, in the third-party thread about uh, if it doesn't have ankle tilts, it's not worth anything. And uh, <laughs> Hasbro's been really good about putting ankle tilts on a lot of their figures lately. But, uh, so yeah, it was something that like they really didn't need to do, I don't think, for Rhinox, but they did it anyway. And uh, it's very much appreciated. It's one of those little details that uh, you don't think of until it's missing. And or you see what it does. But yeah, there's Rhinox. He's very uh, definitely worth picking up. Um, I think. When I'm a big Beast Wars fan. I mean, like I, I grew up on G1, but I really did like Beast Wars. So any good remakes of the cast they put out, um, I'm definitely worth. I'm definitely into picking up Rhinox and Waspinator. Like these two guys should definitely be on your list of what do I want to pick up when I see it? Because those are just two really great figures they've put out so far. So yeah, there it is, Generations Rhinox. Um, definitely gets a thumbs up from me. And just real quick, we'll do, uh, I, I kind of, you, you kind of saw some of it when I was posing it, but just to do a quick rundown on joints just before I forget. Um, he's got a ball jointed head, um, he's got swivel, like dual hinge elbows, or shoulders. Uh, they hinge forward and they hinge up here. He's got um, a, swi a, dual, a swivel and a hinge elbow, a swivel a hinge there. Um, his wrists don't really move, just do the way they transform. Um, he's got the spinny guns. Um, he does have something of a... If you bring this all the way down, he's got a waist swivel. But again, this piece kind of gets in the way. So you can, if you want to have him in, in sideways poses, you can, you can make that happen. But uh, you kind of have to move a few things around. And again, if you have him stand like this, it, uh, 
it makes his waist a lot skinnier and it makes him a little less stable uh, standing up because this, this the waist piece will want to naturally just kind of fall back. But there, there's a look at him with the waist piece down. Um, so it's entirely up to you how you want to display him. Uh, I, like I said, I like to fold it up, give him a little bit more of a squat look. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But up to you. He's got dual swivel uh, hips. He does have a thigh swivel, uh, hinge knees, and then he's got uh, the foot here is on a hinge, so you can move that a little bit, but it, it, it kind of ratchets, so you, you don't have a lot of useful movement. It's either this or this. It's not between anywhere in between. But they do, and then there are the ankle tilts. So you've got a pretty nice range of motion uh, in Rhinox overall. You saw some of the poses I was having him do there in the video. But yeah, there he is, uh, Generations Rhinox. Definitely pick him up. If, if you have any interest in Beast Wars, he should definitely be on your list of things to get.